Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to access weather data using a ladybug in Grasshopper. So if you go to the ladybug tab in the first section labeled zero import, you will find all of the components that you need to access weather data. Uh, of course this is set up to utilize the ladybug tools EPW map. So the second component here, LB EPW map, uh, requires a boolean toggle. Oops. And once you set the boolean toggle to true, it will bring you automatically to the EPW map online. And once you go there, you can search for a location. So I'm just going to go to Philadelphia and it will zoom into that location. And each of the circles with um, a, tr a translucent fill indicate uh, an existing weather file. So if I zoom into the Philadelphia International Airport here, I can see there's three dots here for three uh, weather files. The blue dot is a TMY2 format. So you can see the format in the file name, and you can also use the color coding to understand the files, the, the weather data sources. Um, the TMY2 is available from the DOE's website, so you can either download it from the Department of Energy, or you can copy the link to the clipboard. Since TMY2s are older weather database, we're going to go to the pink circles, and you can see both of the pink circles are TMY3 files but they just come from different sources. So you can download it from onebuilding.org or you can download it from the DOE. For the purposes of this video, we're just gonna copy the link to the clipboard. Okay. All you have to do is click on it and it automatically copies it to the clipboard. And I'm gonna actually paste that value into a panel by hitting Control V and I'm gonna click outside and once you have that weather file URL, you're going to come connect that to the download weather component. So the URL goes automatically into the input. Now you can use the folder location to connect a uh, file path on your personal computer. If you've downloaded the weather file or if you've downloaded and modified it, and you don't want to use it as is, you can connect another panel, you know, just disconnect the URL and connect another panel that has the C drive location to that folder. Uh, since we're using the URL method, I'm just going to keep that together. Now there are three different outputs once you download a weather file and you can open each of these file types using um, three different components in Ladybook Tools. You have the import EPW component, which will open up your EPW file. Then we have the import DDY component, which will open up the DDY file. And lastly, we have the import stat component, which will open up the stat file. So I've just copied all of these here on my screen, and we'll talk about them in just a minute. And it, all you really have to do is connect the EPW file output to the EPW file input. And my order's off a little bit here. Then you're going to connect the DDY file and the stat file accordingly. And once you've done that, these components take care of downloading the weather files, opening them up, and you're now able to access all of the information in each of these um, file type. So if you bring in another panel and you connect it to any of the outputs, you'll see the data that is available for each of these. So we're going to save visualizing this data for another video. For now, I just wanted to talk about the different components and how to access the weather data. So for each of these components, there is a uh, an alternative way of ac uh, accessing the information. So for an EPW weather file, a lot of times you're using it just to get a location. Uh, if your script doesn't require all of the other uh, columns in a weather file, you can use the import location component. 
and connect it to the EPW file. And that will just give you the same output as this larger component, but in a more streamlined um, format. You can also, if you're working in a location that doesn't have a EPW file that you can pull from, you can construct your own location by um, using the construct location component. And the inputs here are, you just need to name it something. So for example, if you are uh, if you have a personal weather station, you might have a custom name that uh, has its own latitude and longitude and you have to put in the time zone. So if you hover over the text in each input, it'll give you a little bit of a description on what the inputs are and what the format should be. So for example, latitude is negative 90 to 90 and the default is set to zero. So if you don't put an input, it's going to assume a latitude of zero. And that's the same for any one of these uh, inputs. Okay, then um, let's go down to the DDY file. So if you're missing a DDY file or there's no data in the design degree uh, file that you that came with the download, you can construct your own using the EPW weather file. So you can connect the EPW file and identify the percentile that you want to evaluate your extreme conditions for and connect a Boolean toggle. You'll want to create a, um, a folder location for you where you want to save it and you'll connect a Boolean toggle to run that file, right? So right now it's false, it needs, it's optional, but it's recommended to identify where you wanna save that file so you know where to find it and um, identifying what your uh, design day should be. So the default is set to, set to 0.4 and typical values are from 0.4 to one. And let's see, the last thing I wanted to talk about is the data to legacy component. So as Ladybug Tools transitions from the legacy version to the newer version of Ladybug Tools, uh, this component may disappear. But if you're working with an older script or you need to get things in a different format, you can use that component to access weather file information. So that's all we're going to show in this video, and uh, thank you for watching.